Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. Let's do the driver's seat next. Let's get a floor match out and uh, get our seat into position. Well, that's what you get with an old car, isn't it? All right, so uh, just to give you a quick shot here of what we're dealing with, got a lot of rust down there on that lower seat rail on this driver's side. Not sure if that's moisture related or electrical current related, but uh, it's pretty nasty. At least, it, uh, at least the bolts came out of there pretty easy. So thank goodness for a powerful battery. Let's get those two covers off there and get those other two 10 millimeter bolts out. That was pretty painless. Uh, all we have to do now is, what the hell did we do? We run, well, we, we run into the camera. Huh. All right, let's see what we have to do here. All right, same deal as the other side. Gotta take that little clip off the uh, seat belt rail. Wrong tool. Universal tool. Universal tool wins. All right, let's gonna let's tilt the seat back and uh, disconnect the carpet underneath the carpet that covers the electrical harness. Then we'll disconnect the electrical harness and then we'll lift the seat out of the car. Actually, scratch that. Let's remove the carpet underneath. Let's move the seat forward. Then we'll disconnect the electricity. That's the carpet I'm talking about. Little clamp that holds the wiring harness in place. All right, this is what this looks like. I just disconnected this small harness here. I don't know what it goes to, but we'll find out later. And we've got this guy right here. And let's see, it's connected in two places there and there pretty much standard mercedes stuff oh man look at that it's pretty nasty yeah 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 all right let me get these two connectors off and then we'll pull this seat out of the car all right that wasn't too bad i just had to position it uh, in place all you got to do is move the seat forward a little bit and then instead of tilting the seat t the top out first you lift this part up first and you tilt the seat like this and then pull it out over the door sill like that and then you tilt it like that. All right, seeing as how I have no desire to try to lift this seat up on my table, I'm gonna take the backrest off first. take skill right there get that off without breaking it that's pretty amazing actually all right if you trace the backrest around the wiring harness is right here for the backrest and there is a connector right there I believe it just lifts straight up in the same fashion that this one does that one just lifts straight out of there so let's see my screwdriver why is it over there why is, why is it over there I don't know because you're stupid hey look at that 
it's like it was meant to be worked on. Amazing. Now all I have to do is clip the tie wraps that hold that in and um, and then we'll be in business. Do we have to clip them? No, I think they unzip. All right, let me unzip these. Get that wiring harness disconnected from the backrest. Then we'll take the backrest off. Then we'll take the bottom part and put it on our bench. All right, break time's over. Backrest, got to come off. I wish I knew how to use my tools. Lift with your legs. That ah, wasn't so bad. Yeah, taking the backrest off first is definitely uh, the best thing to do. All right. Let's assess the situation. A little bit of corrosion, fair amount of corrosion. Got to disconnect that wiring harness for the seat belt. Need to pull that out of there. And a fair amount of corrosion here. I, you know, I'm not sure. I don't think it's quite as bad as the passenger side. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And then we have same deal here nasty white haze grease rust you name it we've got it and uh, the seat covers are in good shape but we're going to put some foam underneath that and firm that right up so let's start taking this thing apart all right here's our floorboard here we got to clean this guy up got a lot of flaky rust uh off the bottom of those seat rails and got those two metal pieces those escutcheons or cover pieces what are you going to call them got those pulled out they're over here you know it's just what causes that did the floorboard get excess moisture in it I, I don't know all right you guys you Mercedes one uh, 126 people why does this happen I want to know put it in the comment down below Now that's new and different. This seat has the proper hold downs to keep this on. So we're gonna need to flip this over to get the wire disconnected. All right, put your old man glasses on. There we go. Hey, look at that. All right, I've heard some rumors. This is supposed to be horsehair. Well, I can't really uh, attest to that. To me, it looks like hay or grass or something. I don't know what that is. I suppose it could be horse hair, but I don't know. You guys tell me. All right, so here's our broken spring. This is the one I eyeballed here several months ago. Makes the sitting experience. Well, it sucks. Let's be honest. Uh, what else do we have here? This... Uh, a little coating on the springs is coming off there. I'm not sure what that is. Probably plastic or... Uh, but they're pretty weak. Look, doing, doing, doing. You know, anyway. And, of course, there's our missing one. I don't know, it's not missing. It just wasn't there from the factory. Clearly, they, they chose not to put it there from the factory because they thought, hey, this is a good idea. Well, no. <laughs> it's not. All right, so seatbelt wiring harness. It goes around. That's that small one we disconnected earlier. So I'm going to pull that out of there, get this thing off to the side, and we're going to get this set of springs off of the frame. This driver's seat's a little more complicated than the other one uh, because it has the, uh, this must be the memory. There's this, this extra box here. We'll show it to you later, but this, this must be the, the memory module for the seats. 
All right, let's get these springs off of the frame. If you don't have one of these impact drivers, you need one. All right, let's get our power leads connected back up to the car so we can move this uh, carriage. All right, we're going to show you where the forward and reverse connections are. Of course, it is under the most difficult area in which to get. So here we go. You got your control box here, your primary connector up here in the front. This is the front of the seat. All right. This connector goes towards the backrest, which has been removed. This one goes to the, uh, it moves the front up and down like that. This guy in the back, this one over here on the far right hand side, this, this pin here where my finger is and that one right there, okay? You put your ground and your hot on either one of those, it'll like in this particular direction, I've got my hot there. If you put your ground there, it'll move forward, vice versa, it'll move backwards, okay? So there is, that is where you wanna to connect to if you wanna make the, the seat move backwards and forwards so we can get our bolts out of here. So that's what I'm gonna, I bet it took me about 10 minutes to figure that out because there's a lot more pins on this one than it was on the passenger seat. All right, so we got it figured out. We're gonna put our seat in position so we can remove the screws to pull this box spring off. And a nail in your alligator clip uh, helps a great deal in this uh, situation. You gotta line up this screw with the hole in the rail, which is, I gotta go about that far. All right, that'll put us in a position to remove the uh, middle screw. Got to get all the right stuff together. Got to get all the right stuff together. Got to move it again. Got to flip it back over. Wrong way. In case you're wondering, yes, it's a pain in the you know what. All right, we got to move it back the other way to get the last two screws out. Wrong direction. Gotta go that way. This tool is required for this job. All right, just a video record here so I won't screw this up. This little piece of metal goes here in this fashion with the bump towards that end curved like that and this is the outside of the car this is the driver's door side all right so when you bang when you try to when you use this impact wrench and you really bang on something hard it will turn it in the direction you want but you have to follow the directions on this on this it says to loosen you turn in that direction, right? So you grab this and turn it like that. And make sure that it's in that way and make sure it, see I just turned it, now that's, now it's gonna tighten. So you have, to, you have to check and make sure it's in the right direction, otherwise you're gonna tighten the screw instead of loosen it. Away we go. One, one set of broken springs actually they're just broken in one spot right there but 
even if they weren't broken, they're really, really weak. So we're not going to use them. Hey, look at this. I think we've been here before, folks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull these rails off next and get those cleaned up with the wire wheel on the drill press. That's one of the best ideas I ever decided to embark upon. Very, very convenient. We're going to get these two rails off here and get them cleaned up. Well, those bolts weren't even tight. This is a lot easier without the springs in our way. We've got to get to this bolt down here. All right, we've got to mark uh, these rails to make sure we know which one is which. And there we go. Not too shabby. Got our sticky tape there. This one's lubricated better than the passenger side was. And the inboard side. All right. I think that's about all for tonight. So I'm going to clean these up tomorrow. Got this second set of uh, little covers here for the driver's seat that go down around the back feet of the driver's seat. You can tell that these were corroded pretty badly, and I um, had to break out some much more aggressive uh, media blasting stuff. Uh, some it's called Black Beauty. Um, it's much more granular, a lot rougher texture, and I was able to get that rust off of there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and prime these with some self-etching primer, and then we'll get a, um, a coat of um, cast aluminum gray on them. So should look pretty nice when we're done. All right, let's go ahead and start reassembling our driver's seat. All right, we've got both our rails on in the same geometry. We've got an inch from here to here and an inch from here to here. Now we can start bolting things down. All right, time to bolt the new springs on. We can get our seat springs bolted up to the frame. All right, here comes the tricky bit. Let's move the uh, seat a little bit so we can get to the other four screws. All right, now we've got to get it in position to get the middle screw in. That's the one that's the most difficult. All right, we've got our seat frame and springs in the right position to get the middle screw in there. I think we're getting good at this, folks. I only had to tweak it a couple of times. All right, last two screws, and then we'll tighten them up. All right, let's move the seat and then we'll tighten up the last two. All right, we've got to put our rubber, uh, we've got to put our foam on our springs and then we can reinstall the upholstery.
All right, that's my basic process. I'm going to go around here and get this thing tightened down real quick, and then we're going to start on the upholstery. All right, that worked out pretty well. We've got our foam tied down to our springs really nicely. And uh, up next, we're going to reinstall our upholstery. We're going to get the horsehair mat back on first, and then we'll cover it with the leather. All right, we've got our horsehair padding back on the seat. We have it overlapped over the top of our foam all the way around. Let's go ahead and get our upholstery on and see if this is going to fit. Looks pretty ragged there on the inside near the, uh, the console. But we're going to clean that up with a little Meguiar's and some 303. It'll look, it'll look pretty good when we're done. All right, here's the nitty gritty. Before we get this cover back on the seat, we're going to have to do a little repair work to this leather. We have some stitching that is pulled away from this, uh, I guess I'll call it a binding for lack of a better word, since I'm not an upholsterer. But, uh, you know, I just fix things, right? Anyway, so we got some needle and thread. And we're going to see what we can do here. So let's get busy. All right. Got some blue thread. And it is made in Egypt. It is 100% cotton. It sounds pretty good to me. All right. So the thread that I bought is not as thick as the stuff that was used to adhere the uh, leather to the binding. So I, uh, I doubled up on the thread. So we're going to see if this works or not. Here we go. I can tell you one thing, it's going to take a while. All right, we've got that corner sewed back up. Somebody did a number on that right there. I'm not too sure what happened there in the past, but we've got stitching all along here. We're going to have to clean this up to get this dirt and grime off of here with some McGuire's later. We'll get that cleaned up and shined up. It'll look pretty good. Uh, but anyway, so the, we got the leather uh, attached to the binding now, so that should be okay. Uh, we got one area over here on this corner to do as well, so I'm going to sew that one up, and then finally we'll be able to get this upholstery back on the seat. We're done sewing. It's still a little bit gnarly, but at least it's got threads in it and they're not coming off. So uh, anyway, we're going to get this upholstery on this seat now, and we're going to get it uh, cleaned up. All right, let's get her cleaned up. I'll tell you what, you gotta have strong hands to do a poster work. I'm glad I don't have to do this stuff every day. All right, to get off some of the uh, more stubborn stains, I put a little bit of the super clean on the leather on the bottom side to get that uh, really stubborn dirt off of there. I wiped it right up, so I don't think it'll, I don't think that detergent is too aggressive for the seat. We'll use the uh, we'll use the mothers on the rest of it, and I'm going to need to get down in these cracks right here. That's pretty boring and mundane, so I'm not going to show you that. When I'm when you come back, the seat will be clean. All right, not too shabby. I think it's time to go ahead and reinstall 
our backrest. Well, that was the hard part. Now what we got to do is put on the uh, reconnect the wiring harness for the electric motor in the backrest, and put the rear cover on, and we'll be ready to reinstall into the car. All right, I think we got our wiring harness situation taken care of here. We've got some uh, little plastic loom connectors back in, and we were able to salvage one of the tie wraps, one of the original ones. That actually, you're able to unzip these if you hold it just right and you can reinstall it so that worked out pretty well uh, we got the backrest adjustment plugged in again in its original location right there which is on the end there's three connectors here one and then two I don't know what that one's for but this one here makes it go back and forth I think this is the tilt as I recall I think that's about it folks I'm gonna go get some help and get this thing down off the table and get it on the floor so we can start moving it into the car. Well, of course we had to bolt the seat in and then unbolt it and tilt it back and move a bunch of things around. This, this seat belt doohickey right here this slide bar that interacts with this bracket on the seat, epic, epic pain in the you-know-what. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay? All right. Let me finish bolting this seat down and get my floor mats back in the car, and we're going to call this project done. Folks, there you have it. We got one driver's seat refurbished with Gen 2 W126 seat springs. Got our floor mats back in. We got all of our electrics reconnected, although the leather squeaks a little bit, but hey, I'll get over it. Uh, we've got the floor mats back in here. The back end looks pretty nice. The, uh, the seat back looks good. Everything's back in order. We have two somewhat restored and refurbished leather front seats in our W126. To be honest with you, this project was quite challenging, and I'm glad it is over. So I appreciate you guys sticking around for part three of the front seat restoration, and this is the last video in this series. So appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.